Hello and welcome. Uh, today we are going to make a hair bow with a plastic canvas cross-stitched center accent piece. Um, and so the things you're going to need uh, include fabric for your bow, a pattern for the pieces of your bow. Uh, I actually usually just use an index card, which is 3x5, and I cut up piece of an additional index card at 3 by 2 inches. Today though I, I'm actually going to use my Cricut to cut out, um, but that would be, those are the sizes that I'm making these bows. I'm using 14 count plastic canvas, it has these nice little holes. You're going to need a needle that's small enough to go through those holes. Uh, I tend to use either these embroidery or Milner's needles. You're going to need some embroidery floss, which I happen to have an entire treasure trove of. And then you're going to need your pattern. Uh, I will link in the description to this pattern. Today I'm making this little Game Boy. Um, I did have to print this out in black and white, um, but actually I'm not, I'm not using the original colors anyway. So I just, and somehow didn't have any graph paper, but it's easy enough to draw some extra lines on some lined paper. Uh, so I actually will be using my my colored pattern here, uh, but this is, this is the original pattern and I am linking to this. Uh, and it is on candypatterns.com done by B Da Bomb. So I'm going for a pastel theme here. I have my pink and purple and white threads at the ready and I have my pattern. You'll notice that I'm using a previously used plastic canvas, uh, so all you need to worry about that is that you're working in a space appropriately sized for your piece. Um, I can actually tell just by looking that I can fit this in here, uh, but how you would really tell is you can count it by um, each corner on your pattern of a square is one of your little holes on your plastic canvas. So you can count across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven stitches across. So you just need to make sure that you have one stitch on either side is usually what I do. I don't like to butt right up against the flat edge. I like to end my stitch in the hole right next to it and then actually cut the straight edge off so that it has a uniform look all around when we go to cut this out. Embroidery floss is a multi-stranded thread. There are six strands in each thread. When I work with this size of plastic canvas, I pull it apart until I have two, strand, two threads of three strands each, and then I work with those. This is called 14 count plastic canvas and what that indicates is that it's 14 stitches per inch. So that's how small your stitches are. First things first, we're going to thread the needle. There we go. And then I tend to find it easiest to start in my upper right hand corner of my pattern and just go one color at a time. So I'm going to give myself enough space so I'm going to gonna make sure that I'm starting somewhere that I want to start. I'm gonna start... Um, I'm gonna start... here. And once you've determined where you're starting your first stitch, and you will be starting on the bottom right corner of your first cross stitch. And so this little corner in the pattern is where you're starting. And you just push your needle through and you want to pull through until you have just a little bit of a tail because we are going to use our stitches to capture that tail and secure our thread. And then diagonally you are going to the upper left corner of the box that is going to be created by your stitch and pulling through to the back and then going 
over your tail thread and into the hole directly under where you just went down, coming up, and then repeating those steps. We counted before, we have seven stitches in our first row. them as I gone and then double counted it afterwards just to make sure I definitely have the right number of stitches and you are gonna once again come up in the hole underneath the top of your last stitch but this is where we go back and cross all our stitches so we're now working going down through the upper right corner of our stitches and that's a completed cross you just keep going back across the row. All right, and then it's time to start our next row. And our next row is one starts one over from our first row. So you just come down and again you're going into that bottom right corner of that stitch. And when you're increasing like this, I like to go ahead and hold hold the thread that's on the back of the work out of the way so that the needle goes to the right side of it so that it can catch it and just sort of pull it in and make it a little a little nicer and neater and then referencing our pattern here you can see that on this row there's one pink and then seven purple and then another pink so we're gonna skip seven stitches and then do that pink stitch. And I tend to count just by poking my needle up through them uh, so I can keep track of my place. Or, additionally, you can just notice that it's just one out from the previous row. So if you go into that hole right under your previous stitch you're already there and then it's time to go back And then these, this big cross of thread on the back is pretty much going to get secured and covered up when we go through and make the purples in that row. Although for, for this work we're not too concerned about what the back of the piece looks like. And you follow on that way, doing just the pink stitches for every row on down to the bottom of your work. Okay, so here's what to do when your thread runs short. I have run short at the end of my initial pass before my stitches are crossed, but that's no problem either. So I take my piece while it's still, you want to do this while it's still long enough to maneuver pretty well because it's going to get annoying otherwise. 
So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to just pass it back through the little loops that are the back side of my stitches. Just three or four, maybe five, whatever feels secure by the end. And I'm just going to pull my thread through and that just secures it pretty much the same way we secured our, at the start. And then I'm just going to snip that short. And this is what we have. I'm going to cut off a new thread. going to wind the extra half back on my bobbin and then I'm going to do exactly as I did when I started off except that because I'm working on my my cross pass going left to right I'm going to start in that bottom left corner and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to leave just a little bit of tail that I'm going to catch up in the stitches I'm just going to hold on to it with a finger, carefully not poke that finger. It can be difficult sometimes. <laughs> Now when your pattern calls for a decreased row, we're going to do sort of like we did when we increased. Uh, I like to pull it with my finger before I insert into the hole that it needs to go through. And I just hold it out of the way, the back of the thread there. I just hold it like that. When I go down through so that it catches that thread and holds it out of the way just to keep my work nice and clean because you can see some of the back of the work because this is clear. So we finished with all our pink and just like before when our thread run out we're just going to go on the back, go through some of these loops back here to secure the thread. And then cut it. And we're ready to move on to purple. So here we're pretty much at the point of rinse and repeat with the steps that you already know. But I do want to show you at least a little bit of each color being done. So with this purple, we can see that it starts just inside our little open rows of pink. So we're just going to go to that corner where the pink is to start our stitching. Just the same as before. Just hold on to that little tail while a loud car goes by uh, and start your stitching. Making sure you stitch over it to secure it in the back.
next rose, and just like before with the pink, we're going to skip over all that space where the white stitches go. And another big cross on the back that is again just gonna get covered up by that white and then you just continue on from there so I have just realized that I actually missed an entire row in the screen area up here of the little Game Boy uh, that should actually the screen should be one more row down but it's Still is still reads as a Game Boy to me, so I am not going to go through the trouble of going all the way back and fixing that. We're going to continue forward th with this mistake and live with it. <laughs> Alright, here we go. We're on the last color. That's this nice, big, easy block of white. stitching it's time to cut our little Game Boy out. Usually I would use an X-Acto knife to do this. Um, it's a little much though. Today I'm going to show you that you can do it with just scissors because this is very easy to cut. What I usually do is this empty row of holes right next to the edge of my piece. I cut through the center of that row. And then when I come to a corner like this, I just cut out the diagonal so that my cut mimics my piece. And there we have our final little cutout Game Boy. I like to seal the back off by dabbing a bunch of Mod Podge onto it. And that'll be all. We'll set that aside and we'll start making our bow. So the way I make my bows isn't the way a bow is traditionally made. I started making these before I learned how to make a bow the traditional way. Uh, but I just kept doing them because they're sort of just, I think of them as like my special spin um, on the bow and I, I like having a unique style. So you're going to need two sets of your large rectangle and just one of your little rectangle. We're going to start with the little rectangle. You're going to fold it over right sides together. And just give that a quick sew.
we're just gonna make sure that little seam goes right in the middle and then you're gonna take with that seam on the outside you're gonna fold your piece over and then you're gonna sew it that way And you're gonna turn once again so all your little seams are on the inside and that is your little bow knot and we're just gonna set that aside and move on to our big rectangles and we're just gonna sew all the way around every side just a straight stitch with the same seam allowance Traditionally, you would leave a turning gap, but we're actually gonna do this the lazy way. So just sew all the sides and I'll show you what's up in a minute. Now that we've sewn all the way around and clipped our threads, we're also gonna clip our corners in just a little diagonal so that when we turn these, they can get a nice little point on them. So then to turn, we're actually gonna sort of identify our exact middle spot here. And by exact, I mean close enough. We're just going to make a cut and we're going to turn through that cut. carefully free check the edges of these holes this will go through to the front if you let the front and the back touch too soon and you could probably also do this with a dab of Mod Podge and then we're just gonna let those dry and those holes are gonna be hidden by the bow knot and that's how I'm able to be so lazy with these so now with our fray check dried and everything all laid out you pick whichever one is going to be your top piece lay it on top of the back of your bow and then we're gonna take the edge and we're just gonna sandwich it in like a little zigzaggy sandwichy formation like that and you're gonna take your bow knot and just shove it through <laughs> Make sure it gets in the middle to cover those holes that we made. 
and tug on it until it looks pretty nice. Like so. I free threaded a needle with just one strand of regular thread, not embroidery floss, and it's just doubled over for a little extra strength in my stitching. We want to put the Game Boy on the center there, so we're just gonna sew it on. fully tacked on and ready to go. Uh, if you're really concerned, you could also put a dab of glue under there for a little extra security. But the stitching should hold. And from here you could actually sew this onto a garment or an elastic band and make it sort of a clip-on bow tie. Um, but what we're doing today is just taking a very simple alligator clip and just putting it through the bow knot and now you have a hairbow. And here we are with our final product. I am super happy with this project. I hope you all enjoyed it too. And I'll see you all next time. Bye. Um.